Well, <clears throat> you remember a mighty angel comes down from heaven. He's clothed in all of God's glory. A rainbow is around his head. His feet is like fire. His face shines like the sun at noonday. And he sets his feet upon the land and upon the sea. And with a loud voice like thunder, he says, Time has run out. Time is no longer to be. In his hands, he has a little book. Now, in chapter 5, we read about, you know, a little book that he had in hand or a little scroll. But there, you remember, it was closed. And uh, the only one who could open it was the Lord Jesus Christ himself. But here, this is another book, or perhaps it could be that same book, we don't know. Uh, you know, John is commanded to eat the book. It was sweet as honey in his mouth, but in his stomach it was bitter and caused him a lot of discomfort. Well, the question comes in very quickly, what book is this? Some say it's the Old Testament. Uh, again, some say it's the same book that was bound in chapter 5 of the seven seals. John doesn't tell us. It's not here. It doesn't tell us what it is. But I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay, I know all of you know what it is, so don't. <laughs> you got your own, you know. Remember when we started this revelation, I said, I'm going to tell you what I have, to, what I believe, or you can come up with your own, whatever you <laughs> I believe this, <clears throat> this little scroll represents the Word of God, the Holy Bible, the title deed to all of creation. And by the way, it all belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ. It is His, listen, everything is His by creation. He made it. <clears throat> it's His by Calvary. He died upon Calvary's cross for it. And it's his by conquest. I just got to add that in there because one day he is coming with all of his power and in great, great glory. And I hope and pray that you're ready for him to come. I believe that he's talking about the word of God. Well, he tells John to eat it and then go and tell others. Well, you know, I, I'll just ask you this question. Suppose Jesus was standing here tonight with outstretched hands and asked you to take his word. Would you be willing to take it? You, you know, before you can tell others something, you've got to know something about yourself, don't you? You know, it, it's not enough to, to read a recipe You've got to get the ingredients together, you've got to cook it, and then you've got to digest it. You remember Job? All of you remember Job, don't you? Job had some tough times. But Job said this. He said, I love God's more than I love daily food. I wonder, how, how much do we love God's word? Do we love it more than we love daily food? You know what fasting is? A lot of people go, you know, fasting and all that. Fasting is when you come and you take the Lord Jesus Christ and he becomes more important to you than anything, including the food that you eat. People are so quick to run out to the restaurant and get a little food, you know. Well, I used to go with them. <laughs> but you know what? We're to take the Lord Jesus Christ. We're to take His Word and we're to digest it. If you know God's Word, <clears throat> you know this also. His Word is both bitter and sweet. That's right. You know, you hear so much about love today. Of course you do. That's sweet. But in Revelation, I want to tell you something. When we read the book of Revelation, we find out that there are a lot of bitter, bitter things in there. For instance, people will be killed. Water will turn to blood. All of these things. People will cry out to die, but death won't come. There's heaven and hell. 
death and life, salvation, condemnation, both bitter and sweet. By the way, I'm going to tell you something. We are to preach the whole gospel of God, both bitter and sweet. It's here in His Word. Now, what he says uh, to John, take this book and eat, then go and prophesy or go and tell. To take and eat means to get it within your soul. Jeremiah ate the words of God found himself in trouble. Ezekiel was commanded to eat the words and it was bitter in his uh, stomach too. Both In both of these instances, if you read that, it was sweet in their mouth, but bitter in their stomachs. We're to digest the Word of God. It is sweet to the taste. But dear friends, listen to me. It's bitter. You ever wonder why it is that George only has two or three people show up to witness? Oh, I better not say. <laughs> because going out and telling people, confronting people about the Lord Jesus Christ becomes bitter. You have people shake their fist at you, tell you to get off of their property, all kinds of things. I remember one time in Ohio, this guy told me, he said, listen, I don't care who you are. You may be the preacher of the church down there, but if you don't get off of my property right now, I'm going to clean your plow. <laughs> well, you know what? I grew up on a farm. I knew what he told me. <laughs> so I got off of his property. It's better. You, you, you try to live. The Word of God. You're going to find out it's not all going to be sweet. It's some of it's going to be bitter, bitter to take. Well, that brings up this question then, doesn't it? Why was the book bitter and sweet? What does it mean? What was the purpose of that? Well, you know, I think he was warning people to be, to be saved. You know, God doesn't put anything in Scripture that doesn't have uh, some kind of meaning to it. I believe that we are warned to read God's Word and to meditate upon it, to preach it, to teach it. And when we do, the Word will be sweet like honey. <laughs> but in His Word, I want to tell you there are prophetic warnings that are bitter indeed. And that is what is written here. You see, the blessings of God's Word is sweet. But if you refuse, if you refuse to heed the words that God has given to us, oh, it'll be bitter indeed. Bitter indeed. Because this book has a lot to say about God's judgment upon those who refuse to accept His Son who died on Calvary's cross for their sins. Amen. Don't hear a lot about that today, do you? But it's here. It's in His Word. And it's bitter. Oh, you know. Isaiah, by the way, you remember Isaiah? Isaiah came into church one day, came into the temple. He saw the Lord high and lifted up. Oh, what a glorious, sweet vision that was. But you know what God told him? After he'd seen this vision, the Lord high and lifted up. God said to him, listen, I want you to go out there and tell the people that they're going to be taken into captivity. They're going to be taken into a place where they cannot sing the songs of Zion. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think about those Christians that are being killed overseas. Living for Jesus. Here we are. Here we are. In church on a Sunday night. Praising God. Singing hymns for Him. Oh that's sweet isn't it? Ah oh, it's sweet. But think of that boy on a boat. Going across the water. Someone going to throw him in. He drowns. That's bitter. It's bitter and sweet you see. 
you know, in Second Kings too, the scribes. You remember where they found the book, the book of the law? They were cleaning out the closet, or cleaning out a room in the in the temple, you know. And they found it. Guess what? They found part of the law. Ain't that interesting? You find part of the Bible in church? Huh? Yeah, well, they found her, you know, the law. They rejoiced when they found it. Oh, that was sweet as honey. But old Ezra, he stood and he read the words, and as they listened to what the words said, it was bitter, bitter indeed. It was so bitter that the king himself tore his clothes off, put on sackcloth and ashes. He didn't want to hear it. <laughs> they didn't want to hear it. You know what? As they heard God's word, they realized that they had not kept the covenant with God, and it was bitter, bitter, bitter indeed. Okay. Now we have the same truths in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is so sweet to know that he loves us. <laughs> oh, I, I just praise him so much. He loved me enough to die for me. He died for my sins. He died for your sin. I know that he will forgive me. Oh, he'll forgive me. Know what else? I know he'll never leave me or forsake me. Anytime, anywhere, I can come to him and call out to him. He's always there. He'll never leave me. <coughs> Praise God. Isn't that, isn't that sweet? Huh? Isn't that sweet? Oh, we love it, don't we? But I tell you, when God cries out for judgment, it's bitter. It's bitter. You read in the book of Revelation how God will, will defeat his enemy. Oh, that's sweet. He'll defeat Satan. That's sweet. You read about the everlasting life in the beautiful city of God. That's sweet. Where there will be no sorrow, no tears, no, oh, no dimmed eyes, no more death on the hillside of glory. How sweet, how sweet that really is. But just another few verses and you find out the judgment of God. Those who reject him will be cast into a lake of fire and there will spend an eternity in a fire that burns forever and ever and it's never quenched. That's not so sweet, is it? Huh? No, that's not sweet. <laughs> that's bitter. Bitter and sweet. John was to take the little book. Hide this sweet to taste. But in his stomach, it became very bitter. You know the true prophet of God believes this Bible and he believes both the bitter and the sweet. There is an awful lot of preaching and teaching today about the love of God. There's nothing wrong with that. This preacher preaches that. Well, I, uh, the Lord zapped me right there. I probably don't preach enough about hell. I probably don't preach enough about God's judgment. Because, dear friends, I want to tell you, it's coming. Amen. It's coming. We want to hear the sweet, don't we? We like that. It's sort of dropped out, you know, the judgment and the, the bitter has dropped out of preaching today. Mm -hmm. The awful sound of judgment and warnings. <coughs> I've had people say to me, now, preacher, come on, they always, you know, straighten up. Yeah. Preacher, <clears throat> you don't want to scare people, do you? What? I want to scare you right out of hell. Amen. And if you do that, you've got to preach a judgment of God. You've got to preach the bitter. 
you know, can't be all sweet. Yeah, we all like to hear sweet, sweet, but that ain't, that won't work. You, listen to old Elijah. Remember Elijah? Up on Mount Carmel, 400 prophets of Baal, you know. And old Elijah, he get, begins to talk to them. <laughs> you know what he says to them? Repent. Repent. They didn't listen to him. You know what happened to them, don't you? How about John the Baptist? Do you remember John the Baptist? <laughs> Oh, he was preaching and, and crying out against all the things that people were doing wrong. He cries out for the people to repent, repent. In fact, he went so far as to call the Pharisees. Oh, I won't call them out of my But he calls them a bunch of vipers, a bunch of snakes, you know. But he said this, he said, there's one coming to lay the axe at the foot of the tree and he will cut it down. Amen. That's right. This morning we talked about Jesus and what he did for us on the cross, how he shed his blood on the cross, how he's in control of this world. He is all in all. And how wonderful and glorious that is. But when I read the book of Revelations and I study the Word of God, I find out that this is absolutely true, my friends. Those who refuse Him and those who reject Him, one day will stand in His judgment. And it's come. Now, if that scares you, I hope it does. Enough that you'll give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Jeremiah. Jeremiah preached the judgment of God. You know what they did to Jeremiah? Jeremiah was preaching to his people in that day. And you know what happened? People got so upset, they threw him in a well. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't want to hear it. Old Amos. Amos, by the way, he thundered the judgment of God. It was coming, but they didn't want to hear it. It was bitter. They didn't, anything bitter, they didn't want to hear it. Same thing today. People don't want to hear it. You know, some things are sweet to the mouth, but I tell you, they'll make you sick at your stomach. I don't know where you've ever ate something, you know, and then a few hours later, you were sick at your stomach. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Well, that's what this is about. The angel says to John, you take this book, you eat it. It's both bitter and sweet. It'll be sweet to your taste. Oh, it tastes so good. But, uh -huh. It's going to be bitter in your stomach. That's what the Word of God is. <coughs> the Word of God, my dear friends, I hate to say this, is not all about love. It's not all about well, I take that back. It is all about Jesus, but it's not all about His love and His going to the cross and dying for you. Because one day, if you continue to reject Him and refuse to accept Him, you'll understand what His judgment is all about. And then it will be bitter, bitter, bitter. <laughs> Too late. That's right. You know what? <clears throat> God's Word, God's Word, when it is heated, it'll make a sweet life. It'll make a sweet home. Oh, and I hope you read the Word of God in your home. I hope you take it. I, I don't know about your, how you do it. The wife and I, we read at night. We need to read it morning. And we pray just about any time and every time. Talk to the Lord. He'll make a sweet life for you and make a sweet home. It'll all, by the way, he'll also make a sweet nation. You know what's wrong with our nation? Uh, some of you thought it was the president. <laughs> or some of you thought it was this guy or that guy. I tell you what's wrong with it. What's wrong with it? There's not enough Bibles being opened, read, and lived by. 
And that's what we need. God's people begin to be what God would have them to be. Oh, we live in a sweet nation, but when it's ignored, it becomes bitter. And you know what? The Word of God is being ignored in our land today. Yes. But, again, what is being ignored more than that is the fact that everybody wants to hear the sweet. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Preacher, you brought a sweet little sermon this morning. Well, bless your heart. If I brought a sweet little sermon, I done wrong. Because I need to bring sermons that don't only speak of the sweet, but they speak of the bitter as well. If I understand God's word at all, if you refuse, if you reject Him, the bitter is coming. A day of judgment will come. And you'll have to face it. Let us pray. Almighty God, how we thank you and praise you for your wonderful, precious, holy word. We realize <clears throat> that in your word, ah, oh, there's some sweet, sweet things. Sweet things in my love, for God so loved us that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. But you've got to believe, and you've got to accept. And you've got to ask for forgiveness. Because we're told that if we do not do that, that there's a place called hell. And there, those who reject you will spend an eternity. The rich man in hell, he lifted up his eyes and cried out just for one little drop of water. They couldn't get it. Oh, God, help us to understand that in the Word of God, there is both sweet and bitter. And I pray that you'll help me to preach both of them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.